British Airways retires its final 747. Boeing will stop manufacturing the 747. The A380, the wondrous jet that never took off. Airbus to stop production of the A380. These and countless other articles have been written this year about the dozens of remaining jumbo jets and them being phased out and sometimes even scrapped altogether. But why would these airlines that just so recently found use for these colossal jets all of a sudden decide to retire or even scrap their jumbo jets? Are they just another COVID fatality? Or is there more to this story? In this episode of Aerospace History, we're gonna do an autopsy on the two most massive airliners to ever take to the skies. Over 50 years ago, Boeing introduced us to the first jumbo jet ever, the Boeing 747. At the time, it was the largest airliner to ever exist. And for decades, it had the largest passenger capacity of any aircraft on the market. Later on, Airbus would jump into the jumbo jet arena, announcing their A380, one-upping Boeing with two full decks of passenger space. But Boeing announced in July that they would be ending their production line of the 747. And despite Emirates' best efforts, Airbus is also ending their A380 line. So was it COVID that killed these jumbo jets or is there really more to this story? To understand what went wrong with the jumbo jet, we first have to click the subscribe button because according to my research, 95% of you are not subscribed to this channel. And as we know, if you wanna learn more about aerospace engineering, you have to be subscribed to this channel. True story. But in all seriousness, subscribing to the channel really does help out a lot and it's free. So please consider subscribing if you found this content interesting. Do it. But to really understand what went wrong with the jumbo jet, we really do have to look back at the beginning of this story. Over 50 years ago when the 747 was first introduced, commercial aviation was at an all-time high. Business was booming and there was a huge demand for larger aircraft. Airlines desperately needed a way to move the maximum amount of people possible from one destination to another. Part of the reason that these airlines needed to move such huge quantities of people was because of their business model at the time. At the time, airlines used what's known as a hub and spoke model. To better understand what a hub and spoke model is, we can use a simple example. Let's say for instance that you live in New York City and you wanna to travel to Dallas. In order to travel to Dallas, you're gonna fly in Delta Airlines. This airline using a hub and spoke model is likely to route you from New York flying into Atlanta and then from Atlanta to Dallas. And the reason for that is because Atlanta is a Delta hub, meaning that's where their base of operations is. This is convenient for airlines because all of their flights can originate from one location. They can have all their offices, their pilots, their flight staff all live in one location and they can all splinter off from one airport. So using this model, you need to have big airplanes so you can move massive amounts of people to these large airports. There are still a few airlines that rely on this model, namely Emirates, who relies on this hub to hub model because their hub, their base of operations is in Dubai, which is an incredibly overcrowded airport with a finite amount of terminals, but huge amounts of population going through there. However, as air travel has become more and more prominent throughout the years, this model has become less and less successful, forcing these airlines to adopt variations of this model and sometimes abandon it altogether. Another reason that these airlines have abandoned this model is because more and more people are going to more and more smaller destinations, pushing the market towards smaller aircraft in order to transport these small amounts of people to smaller cities. As an example, to visualize this change, we can look at routes out of a city such as Minneapolis. Because airlines have largely abandoned the hub and spoke design, they're able to fly into many more destinations direct, as opposed to having a layover in a hub city. So now you can fly from Minneapolis to a smaller city much farther away, for instance, Gulfport. Not only is this way more economical and more profitable for these airlines to do, but it's way better for passengers because who wants to have a layover if you don't have to? Another contributing factor to the decline of the hub and spoke model is something known as ETOPS. ETOPS stands for Extended Range Twin Engine Operational Performance Standards. According to the FAA, commercial aircraft always has to be within 60 minutes 
of an emergency landing unless that aircraft has three or more engines. But as the FAA has recognized the reliability and dependability of jet engines and these aircraft over the years, they've created these standards in which an aircraft could meet them and be able to fly farther than 60 minutes away on two engines alone. That means any plane with an ETOP certification can fly farther than it normally would be allowed to do. For instance, before ETOP certifications were a thing, you would most likely have to fly on a jumbo jet or a huge wide body aircraft to fly transatlantic flights. But now airlines can rely on aircraft such as the 787 with ETOP certifications that can make these transatlantic flights and have a much smaller capacity and better fuel efficiency. That way it's easier for these airlines to sell these seats, making the price actually cheaper to fly, not only because of the efficiency, but because the airline can be more sure that they're gonna book the entire flight. As all of these changes to the industry were slowly being adopted, Airbus was no doubt envious of the success that they had seen of Boeing's 747. And Airbus wanted the jumbo jet of their own. So in 2000, Airbus finally announced that they would be releasing a jumbo jet of their own, the Airbus A380. It would go on to become the single most ginormous commercial aviation aircraft in history sporting two full decks of passenger capacity compared to Boeing's meager one and a half decks. Pow. Oh! The A380 typically holds a capacity of around 525 passengers compared to Boeing 747, 410 passengers. At the time that Airbus announced the A380, the industry was steadily growing. And just like Boeing had seen 50 years ago that there was gonna be a demand for larger and larger aircraft, Airbus also thought that airlines would be seeking out larger and larger aircraft. So they sought to fulfill that demand by building an enormous aircraft. The A380 is so massive that they thought it'd be a cute idea to call it the super jumbo jet as opposed to Boeing just being a jumbo jet. But Airbus neglected to account for several things, one of which was the overhead of a massive undertaking like building the largest aircraft in commercial aviation history. They also did not foresee the demise of the hub and spoke design, nor could they possibly imagine the recession of 2008. All of this crippled Airbus in the beginning of its program, causing them to sink over $30 billion into the A380 program, which they themselves say they will never recoup. I am never gonna financially recover from this. Even with a price tag of over $445 million per aircraft, they still barely break even just with the production cost of an A380. All the while Boeing was focusing on efficiency and smaller aircraft than their competitor Airbus. All in all, Airbus was way too late to the jumbo jet game and the time of the jumbo jet really has passed. Ever since 2015, there have been rumors flying that Airbus would end their production line of the A380 because it has never truly been profitable. But their biggest purchaser of the A380, Emirates, has stepped in several times to make sure that Airbus continues to have that production line. And the reason that they can still afford to purchase the A380 is because they still rely heavily on the hub and spoke model. And to make matters worse for the A380, the A380 was designed without retirement of the aircraft in mind. Normally commercial aircraft have a certain lifespan that they want to deal with the aircraft for. And then after its service lifespan, the airline will turn around and either sell it to another owner or sell it for scrap or sell it mostly to cargo carriers. These cargo companies don't really care about how nice and shiny the aircraft is since no one's gonna be flying on it. So they'll happily take old aircraft off of these airlines hands. However, this does require a fair amount of modifications to the aircraft. You have to remove the seats, the overhead bins, you have to reinforce the floors and you have to put a voluminous door on the aircraft, meaning basically you have to drill a gaping hole into the airframe. That way the hole is spacious enough so they can get these massive crates on and off the aircraft with ease. However, with the way that the A380 is designed and the stress is distributed, it cannot be converted into a cargo aircraft. That means when the A380 ends its lifespan as a commercial aircraft, it's gonna have to be sold for scrap as opposed to an aircraft which loses a lot 
of value for the airlines in this airplane. All of these factors combined to make Airbus finally announce in 2019 that they would be ending the production line of their famed A380 Super Jumbo Jet. So although COVID has forced a few A380s into retirement and many more to be grounded, it was not the reason for the death of the A380. After the travel restrictions in 2020, dozens of airlines announced that they would be grounding, selling, retiring, and sometimes even scrapping their 747s and A380s. So much so that even Emirates said that they would be retiring some of their A380s. In a drastically reduced travel market, it really just doesn't make economical sense to fly a behemoth like an A380. A few months ago, there were only 35 747s flying, and it had already been years since a single airline had purchased the 747 for their airline. However, there have been cargo companies that have purchased the 747, but not for commercial passenger use. And despite the 747's historic successful run, Boeing announced in July of 2020 that they would be ending the production line of the 747 in 2022. Wide body twin engine aircraft such as the 777, the 787, and the A380 have largely been filling the roles of these jumbo jets. And although news of the 747's death came during the COVID-19 pandemic, it certainly wasn't the only cause. It was merely the straw that broke the camel's back. These aircraft had been on the endangered list for years before the pandemic even happened. This unfortunately was just the dreaded death blow for them. Fatality. And as unfortunate as it may sound, there will be a time in the not so distant future that we see the last of these jumbo jets take its very last flight. And on that very happy note, make sure you subscribe to the channel so you stay up to date for all things new in the aviation industry. Thank you so much for watching and Godspeed.